If these coral reefs were lost one day, it could be very costly to this coastal region. Eroding coastlines and the loss of fishing grounds, plus losses in tourism, could harm the economy of any country that so far has enjoyed such biodiversity. And the same is true for forests, wetlands and other ecosystems. Their destruction would result in the loss of an economic asset. Protecting these assets pays off. That is the reason why the World Bank has launched a new global partnership that will give developing countries the tools they need to value the economic benefits of biodiversity. If we're going to address the alarming loss of habitat and the degradation of eco ecosystems in the world, we have to properly value natural capital. And that means putting the tools in the hands of finance ministers so that they have full economic picture of what all their country's assets are worth. Then they will be able to see the value of preserving versus one-off exploitation of natural resources. The partnership brings a number of pilot countries together with organizations that have experience in green accounting, such as the United Nations Environmental Program together with the World Bank. Collectively, they will try different approaches to the valuation of ecosystems. Once this has been tried in different countries, the partners will develop a set of tools that will help finance ministers to make informed judgments about the short-term use versus long-term use of their natural assets. The tools that are required to be able to value ecosystems are only being developed now, and there's a great deal of work still to be done on testing such tools and, and approaches. This is a new area. We have experience in better understanding the cost of environmental degradation so that finance ministers can make decisions on investments in high cost pollution management and infrastructure. But for natural assets it's much more challenging. It's much, there's not a market price for most of the ecosystems and the ecosystem services in many cases are not well understood. India and Colombia are the first countries to participate in this partnership, which in its first phase will be extended to up to 10 countries. Initial funding will be provided by Japan and the United Kingdom.